Hello. In this video, we'll be discussing how mitochondrial function is affected by saturated fats. But not only that, the implications of that effect for your muscle cells, and even some mechanisms for this effect. Mitochondrial dysfunction is a key suspect involved in many diseases, from cancer to diabetes, and, well, many in between. One of the most critical tissues involved in the protection from many of these diseases is muscle, because it sucks up so much energy. As such, muscle is filled with high amounts of mitochondria in an absolute sense. If these mitochondria are healthy and functional, we tend to have healthier muscles that suck up more energy, taking sugar and fats out of the blood, reducing the risk of disease. I'm simplifying, but this is a good groundwork with which we can move forward. With that in mind, some researchers released a series of studies looking at the direct effects of saturated fats on mitochondrial function and health. These experiments were done in plated cells, meaning the cells were taken from the muscle tissue and put on a cell culture dish. This allows for more exact experiments looking specifically at muscle cells. It also carries other advantages and disadvantages. But for that, I'd encourage that you check out the long form breakdown of the study that I'll be highlighting for you here. Let's look a little bit at the data from this study and then we'll pull things together for ourselves. The researchers have added substantial amounts of saturated fat palmitate to the cell media, which is the liquid surrounding the cells that is full of nutrients to keep the cells alive. And we are seeing the effect palmitate has on the amount of DNA damage that occurs. Our cells contain DNA that makes up our genes, and that DNA is kept in the nucleus, but a small amount is found in the mitochondria as well. The more DNA damage, the worse off the cells are. But the researchers didn't stop there. They also transfected the cells, which means they strategically input a gene into the cells. Again, for more info, check out the longer version of this video. Now, the gene is one that holds the genetic information for a protein, an enzyme known as human glycosylase. And its function within the cells is to repair DNA, genes. Looking at the data, we're looking at two different concentrations of palmitate saturated fat. The black bar is a measure of mitochondrial DNA damage without the addition of the DNA repair enzyme. The hash bar is again without the DNA repair enzyme, but the effect on DNA in the nucleus of the cell. Then both repeated with the addition of the DNA repair enzyme. Based on this data, we can clearly see there's an increase in DNA damage that is specific to mitochondria when the muscle cells are exposed to saturated fat. Now, the researchers looked at two more measures of mitochondrial function, though. This next one is a vital one as we're discussing the ability for the cell to fulfill its roles, so cell energy, which is quantified as cellular ATP level. The black bar represents the amount of cell energy produced with the addition of palmitate at the two concentrations. Then the white bar represents the ATP amount with the addition of the DNA repair enzyme. So clearly there's a substantial increase in cell energy within the cell when DNA repair machinery is enhanced. There should have been a measure of ATP without the addition of palmitate, but no doubt there is an effect of the rescue through DNA repair, at least likely through DNA repair, implying saturated fats or at least palmitate reduces cell energy levels. The final piece investigating mitochondrial dysfunction looks at the amount of oxidative stress that is produced by mitochondria when exposed to palmitate. Under the same conditions, the researchers wanted to know how much of these reactive oxygen species would be generated. If you're not familiar, reactive oxygen species are molecules that, if overabundant, can cause damage to the components of the muscle cell. Again, we see that palmitate increases the amount of oxidative stress, except in the presence of the DNA repair enzyme that we discussed before. So now, we have a series of measures that show mitochondrial dysfunction, but how does it actually manifest for the muscle cells? 
The researchers decided to measure the cell's survival to the exposure to palmitate. And as indicated, the viability of the muscle cells solely exposed to palmitate did not lend itself well to cell survival. There was, however, somewhat of a protective effect with the expression of the DNA repair enzyme. However, it wasn't a complete protection. This data would imply that saturated fat then increases cell death. And one, but not the only, mechanism is the DNA damage within the mitochondria. But what is the mechanism for this cell death? There are many. To determine the mechanism, the researchers looked into the amount of a particular cell death protein known as caspase. Caspase is an interesting protein because it's classified as a protease, which is a protein that cuts or breaks up other proteins within the cell. When it's in its full length form, it is considered inactive, but when it is cleaved, it is active which means it floats around in the muscle cells and cuts up all the other proteins within the cell that are necessary for the cell to function. In the end, this damage to the cell leads to cell death. Well, if we look at the amount of total caspase in a control condition compared to when palmitate is added, the levels differ. And the same is true when we look at the levels of cleaved caspase with an increase in the palmitate condition as more of the full caspase protein is being cleaved. Again, however, when the DNA repair enzyme was expressed, the levels of the cleaved caspase reduced significantly. So all of this informs us that the cells are dying, at least partly due to caspase activation known as cleaved caspase. All of these pieces of data show a negative effect of the saturated fat, palmitate, on muscle mitochondria through evidence of increased DNA damage, reduced cell energy, and increased oxidative stress, which are also associated to less cell survival. This would imply that palmitate increases mitochondrial dysfunction implicated in many disease states, but that's really only covering one type of fat. But what about the other types like unsaturated fat? Do these negative effects extend to all fats? or only to select fat types? Well, I'll provide you the answer because this research group decided to investigate that very question. So if you're interested, let's discuss. Or if you'd like to know the effect saturated fat has on insulin signaling implicated in diabetes, then I'll speak to you there. Until then, bye.